Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and in today's episode, we have a listener request uh, from a guy on Twitter, at Sam1 underscore Phillips. He says, I love your breakdowns on YouTube, and I'd be really curious to see a Danny Shelton analytics breakdown vid. And yeah, I think I can do a Danny Shelton uh, vid. Uh, of course, Danny Shelton, uh, first-round pick of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, 2015 he's a nose tackle a nose tackle is a position that I'm just now starting to get a better handle of in terms of how to evaluate those guys um, how to kind of group them up and it just takes a while I mean you get thousands of defensive tackles you have to categorize the defensive tackles in a, in a objective way how to categorize them uh, and then you also you have to get the sort of the ultimate decision of me having to rely on okay this is what you think is a is a special nose tackle and trying to work from there so essentially what what i've been doing with nose tackle data is trying to find an objective way of what a good nose tackle is and then looking at what the markers like what their production looks like and then measuring up nose tackles based on that sort of criteria um, which is a very tricky thing to do because um, defensive market share data uh, you know, or defensive data in general is, is, I don't think it lies in the fact of impact because again, if a guy has 50 tackles, he has 50 tackles. If he has 10 sacks, he has 10 sacks. Like he's contributing to the football team. Um, but I do think it kind of leaves out certain guys who don't quite get those sacks and don't quite get those other sort of uh, production markers because they're asked to do uh, you know, they're asked to run stuff, they're asked to two gap, they're asked to do things that take uh, more, uh, uh, you know, it, like, I don't have a ton of data that's just charting based, and as a result, it's kind of hard to pinpoint who's really a two gapper and who really isn't a two gapper. The bottom line is, is I'm not really winging it here, but I'm just doing my best to kind of show this as objectively as possible in terms of what good nose tackles usually do in terms of production. Um, what's unique about them, what are some of the athleticism traits that these types of guys have that makes them successful, and then of course specifically talk about Danny Shelton in terms of what his production, you know, what he looked like as a prospect coming out, and then ultimately what he looks like in the NFL and what his future will probably look like. Uh, so we're going to be talking about nose tackles, and again, if any sort of thing I talk about today uh, in terms of defensive mark share, explosive or body strength score, speed score, flexibility score, if you're not familiar with those terms or you haven't seen any of my other videos, I would say go see some of my other videos. If you, if you don't really want to do that, I'm going to leave in the description the terms and the definitions of those terms so that you have some familiarity of what I'm talking about there as well. So if you're not familiar with these terms, just go to the description. And if you still don't really know what I'm talking about 100% or you're not on the same page, just leave a comment um, asking me, you know, like, I don't really know what defensive market share is. Could you explain? I don't really know what, you know, the athleticism data is. Could you please explain? Because I'm happy to, uh, to explain all that stuff. So, um, so, again, you can do one of those three things, and, uh, and that should help you to kind of understand where I'm coming from when it comes to data. So starting with Danny Shelton, and according to his data, he had a 99.04 solo tackle market share score, 83.95 sack market share score, and 95.43 tackle for loss market share score. Um, this was him as sort of a nose tackle, you know, at Washington. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, nose tackles are productive, they're not this, they're not that. Uh, not Danny Shelton. Uh, Danny Shelton, by far, was probably one of the most productive nose tackle types uh, coming out of college in terms of just pure production. Um, he, you know, and again, the, most of the, like, he doesn't have to have 83.95 sack market share. He doesn't have to, he doesn't need to have 95.43 tackle for loss market share. He just needs to have the sort of thresholds that are right there in terms of all pro and probable potential. So by far the best sort of thing on paper with Danny Shelton is his market share production, is his production in college because he was everywhere, and uh, it, it's pretty amazing to see a guy like him to put up this type of statistics, especially a nose tackle type. Uh, and then when you actually get to his athleticism data, this is the only area of concern that Danny Shelton had coming out of college. Um, he had a 91.75 explosive or body strength score, a 9.01 speed score, and a 51.67 flexibility score. 
Uh, based my data since 1999, there's never been a long-term starter who had less than 11.41 speed score. More on this later, but this is the only sort of major question mark with Danny Shelton was his speed score. Uh, because again, when I say there's never been a long-term starter with a speed score lower than 11.41 and you know, I mean, it, it's never happened before. It doesn't mean it won't happen again. I think Denny Shelton might actually help that score out, you know, help that sort of uh, uh, data point out. But that was the only sort of major red flag with him. However, the one thing I could say a lot of times with athleticism data in general, just generally speaking about athleticism data, a lot of times you're just looking for somebody who has one specific skill set that is above average. Uh, so are they elite in terms of explosiveness? Are they elite in, ter elite in terms of speed, elite in terms of flexibility? The one thing I could say about Danny Shelton is he's elite in terms of his explosiveness for a size, and he also has at least the flexibility, at least the bare minimum flexibility for all pro potential type of uh, defensive tackle. So he's explosive and he's flexible. Um, you know, those are two major positives with him. He just isn't very fast. And it really just becomes what type of scheme you're running, what type of athlete you're looking for, and then going from there, which brings us to the elephant in the room. Um, the one player who sets that 11.41 speed score standard is Starlo Tulele. And there are a lot of similarities between Denny Shelton and Starlo Tulele when it comes to athleticism. If you look at Starlo Tulele here in terms of his athleticism data, he has a 75.56 explosive lower body strength score a 11.41 speed score because he sets that standard in terms of that speed score for starters and then an 88.61 flexibility score um, and really the only big difference between Danny Shelton and Starlo Tulele is that Danny Shelton is much more explosive while Starlo Tulele is much more flexible um, if you really wanted to choose one or the other I would go with Starlo Tulele as an athlete just because he has a balance of those two extremes you know He's very flexible with a pretty decent amount of explosiveness, but I would say that there are lots of similarities when it comes to uh, their athleticism traits, um, which is one of the guys I was actually pointing to in that draft class as sort of an example of, you know, you don't need to be an elite athlete to be a really impactful player, or at least a nose tackle type, because um, because again, I mean, I don't I don't want to keep repeating myself, but nose tackle is a very specific position, you know, it's. It's not asking you to be everywhere. It's just asking you to do very specific things. And just in terms of athleticism, if, if you just think about this as well as you can, explosive lower body strength deals with how powerful you are in terms of your hips and your ankles. While flexibility testing deals with the short shell and the three cone, which is measuring how flexible you are in terms of your hips and your ankles. And if you are a very powerful player with lots of flexibility, and flexibility in many ways speaks to leverage ability. So if you're powerful and you also are flexible enough to be able to maintain leverage for a while, that pretty much spells out what you ask of a nose tackle. At least the bare minimum things that you ask of a nose tackle is those types of athleticism traits. And it's not to say that having speed isn't a bonus. I mean, it's always great to have a nose tackle that is also fast. So Loche Nata, we've, you know, we've seen this before, <laughs> you know. It, it, it's not that having speed as a nose tackle is, is, is a bad thing. It's just something extra. It's just what is the bare minimum thing that you're asking this player to do? And in many ways, the athleticism traits that Danny Shelton had on paper fits the bare minimum that you're asking him to do. If he wasn't an explosive or flexible player, I would call him to question that. Because I do know a lot of people, when they see a nose tackle and he runs slow, they go, oh, he's a nose tackle. He doesn't need to run fast. But they better be explosive, they better be flexible. At least based on the data, uh, for the most part, nose tackle types need to be explosive, they need to be flexible. If they aren't fast, then they need to be something. You know, they need to be explosive, they need to be, they need to be flexible. Um, and uh, I think in Danny Shelton's case, I think there's enough positives on paper with him uh, that you could point to the fact that he's explosive, he has at least the flexibility, he has at least above average flexibility to average flexibility, uh, and I think those two traits alone, coupled with his production at the college level, should be enough to keep him in a good range of possibilities when it comes to his production at the NFL level, which is where we get to his actual NFL production. Now, this is his data from 2015 to 2016, 
it takes into account sole tackle market share, which is MSAPER, SAC market share, which is MSSPER, past deflection market share data, which I'm thinking about actually get ri getting rid of that for certain positions. And then uh, total PER is total impact PER. Um, for the most part, Danny Shelton has been really good in terms of solo tackle market share at the NFL level uh, with an 80.72 in 2015 and then a 95.20 in 2016. Uh, he hasn't really been the best in terms of sacks, although he did have an above average year in 2016. And his best sort of total impact year was 69.69. And this is compared to every single defensive tackle. Um, so you might be going, okay, what does this mean, James? You know, like, what, what does this mean? Well, what it means is, is that as a nose tackle, he does certain things well and he doesn't do other things well. Again, what are you asking this defensive tackle to do? Are you asking them to sack? Are you asking them to pressure? Are you asking them to get their hand up and bat down balls? And I think when you compare Denny Shelton to other nose tackle types, and I picked out two big ones. One is Snacks Harrison because people talk about Damon Harrison a lot when they talk about nose tackles. He's considered to be one of the best nose tackles in the NFL. And if you actually compare Snacks Harrison to Danny Shelton, they compare very favorably when it comes to how they produce. Uh, Danny, Damon Harrison, in terms of how he produces, he has very high solo tackle market share. He has kind of low sack market share. He only had one year where he had really high pass selection market share, which was 2013. But for the most part, he's been pretty much like Danny Shelton in terms of impact, in terms of having uh, below average pass flexion market share, uh, pretty much below average sack market share, and then really, really high uh, solo tackle market share. And in fact, the 2016 season, when it comes to Snacks Harrison and uh, Danny Shelton, is almost identical. Uh, the only real difference is Damon Harrison had higher solo tackle market share. You had 99.19 compared to 95.20, but if you actually look at it, like if you just look at it, just like compared to each other, um, they're pretty dang close. You know, Snacks Harrison, considered to be the best nose tackle in the NFL, is better than Danny Shelton, but not by much. Uh, so I think there's lots of positives to speak to the fact that this is probably a, and again, I'm trying to be as objective as possible. You know, people say, uh, at least most estimates in terms of PFF, in terms of uh, just how people, the consensus is that Damon Harrison is a top five to the best nose tackle in the NFL. If that's the case, then looking at the production compared to Dane Shelton, there's similarities there. And matter of fact, they're pretty much almost identical when it comes to the production. So I would say Danny Shelton uh, is pretty much in line with other great nose tackles in the NFL. Um, in terms of Damon Harrison. And then when you actually get to the last player I'll, I'll bring up is uh, Starlo Tulele because I pulled up his um, athleticism data as a comparison. Um, Danny Shelton has actually been kind of better than Starlo Tulele. Uh, you know, his, uh, his, Danny Shelton's rookie season was not as good, um, but Starlo Tulele is a player who, for the most part, had a very good start to his career in 2013 and 2014 and then kind of went downhill in 2015 and 2016. I'm not quite sure on that yet. Uh, but what I would say is that when, when you look at Danny Shelton compared to Starlo Tulele, one, Danny Shelton is a younger player. I mean, that's kind of the first thing that's evident. Um, but two, uh, the production is also kind of similar in terms of, uh, uh, you know, Starlo Tulele's 2013 season compared to Danny Shelton's 2016 uh, season is very comparable in terms of how they produced on paper. Um, so again, just comparing a nose tackle to a nose tackle in terms of production, I think if you look at Danny Shelton, um, he may not have like total impact score that's as high as all these other sort of, you know, like a like a Aaron Donald or whatever, you know. But Aaron Donald isn't asked to do the same things as Danny Shelton, so you have to compare him to other types of players that people consider to be really good nose tackle types. And this is where Danny Shelton looks to be that on paper. Um, he pretty much has similar production to Star Luther Lately, uh, almost identical production to Snacks Harrison last year. And it's because of that that I think you have lots of positives to point to with Danny Shelton. Uh, you know, and, and to just to put a bow on all this stuff, um, I think when you look at Danny Shelton, you look at his production come out, it was outstanding. had outstanding production coming out of Washington. Um, his athleticism traits brought some pause for concern. 
Um, the one thing I could say is my date only goes back to 1999. I wish it went back farther than that, but it doesn't. Um, so I just have to work with what, what I have to work with. But it's not that I'm not above seeing a guy become an outlier. Um, because I do think there's lots of positives on paper. It's just trying to understand these positions. You know, it's trying to understand how these positions work, what athleticism works best, and all the other kind of stuff. And I think when it comes to nose tackles, it's becoming evidently clear that yes, the sort of premise that, well, they don't need to be fast is true. Because you just look at Star Lotsa lately, you look at Snacks Harrison even, uh, and those are guys who didn't have, really have the best speed scores, but they did have other things that made them better, like explosiveness, like flexibility, uh, which basically means that in the future when I evaluate nose tackles, I'm going to be looking for those traits. I'm going to be looking for, when I look at a nose tackle, even if they don't run very fast, I'm going to be looking to see, are they are they explosive? Are they flexible? You know, those are two main big data points, data traits, whatever you want to call it, that I think are going to be very important in terms of evaluating nose tackles in the future, uh, because I think it's proven out, and it just makes sense that if you're running that type of scheme, if you're if you're trying to get a guy who two gaps, it's really important for them to be powerful in terms of lower body strength and also flexible enough to maintain leverage. And I think in Danny Shelton's case, he has both of those qualities, which really help him out. And then of course, we looked at his production at NFL level, which is very comparable to the top nose tackles in the NFL. So at this point, Danny Shelton is never really, I mean, I'm just going to say it, I'm just going to say it right now. Danny Shelton is never going to be a, a Aaron Donald productive dude. Um, like, he's not asked to do that, and I don't think that that's, like, I don't see that in his future. But if you're comparing him to other nose tackles, what they ask nose tackles to do, and from that kind of perspective, Danny Shelton is right in line with what we expect of nose tackles to the best nose tackles in the NFL. And from that standard, measuring Danny Shelton up to the standard of what nose tackles typically produce like, I would say Danny Shelton has a pretty bright future. Uh, if he keeps doing what he's doing, I think there's lots of positives. I think that whole defensive line on the Cleveland Browns is pretty dang good. And I think he's going to be a very interesting prospect to watch in the future uh, and a very valuable player as well because you know, you're not asking him to sack the, you know, the quarterback. Miles Garrett, that's his job. You know, that's his job is to sack the quarterback. Dave Shelton's job is to two gap and take up and take up space and also affect the plays when it comes to solo tackles. Because I think um, you know, pinpointing on solo tackles is a major point because again, Snacks Harrison had very high solo tackle mark share. Star Lotulele in his breakout season had very high solo tackle mark share. Um, I think that the sort of conception that well no tackles don't need to be productive is a bit kind of meh because they do need to be productive but they're just productive in a different way they're not getting sacks and tackles for loss but they are getting solo tackles which i think you know speaks to a broader sort of um sense of what their actual impact is it's not you know it's not penetrating upfield it's it's making plays sideline to sideline uh so and i think that's kind of the best way that that kind of eliminates but uh, with all this stuff out of the way, again, I think Danny Shelton is a, a great prospect. I think he's shown out to be one of the best nose tackles in the NFL thus far. Has the production to say that. Has some intriguing athleticism traits to kind of help him out in his endeavor. And I think there's lots of positives for him in the future. Uh, so again, my name is James Coburn. You can find my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well if anybody that you know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.